Hello, I'm Rebecca and I work with St Leonard's and St Mary's churches. In this assembly today, we're going to be thinking about two words beginning with F. Fear and forgiveness. Have you ever told a lie so that you didn't get into trouble? Have you ever let a friend down rather than get into trouble? Just think about the answers to those questions for a minute. I've got a story for you today about someone called Peter who did both those things. Peter was one of Jesus' special followers, one of his closest friends. Here's a picture of him. He's the one in the green, always close to Jesus. In fact, he was one of the first that Jesus had chosen one day when he was out fishing with his brother Andrew. And since then, Peter had gone everywhere with Jesus. Right from the start, Peter knew that Jesus was no ordinary man. And as time went by, he began to think that perhaps Jesus was the special one sent by God to help people. And one day, Jesus had asked his special followers who they thought he really was. The others had hesitated, but Peter had come right out with it and said, you're the Messiah, the special one sent by God. And after he'd said it, Jesus began to tell them what was going to happen to him, that he was going to die. Peter was shocked. What are you talking about? He demanded. You aren't going to be killed. Haven't I just told you? You are God's special one. No one can kill you. But Jesus had told him that he didn't understand. And he was right. Peter didn't understand. Well, now it seemed that Jesus was right again. Peter stood miserably in the courtyard, trying to keep warm by the side of the fire. Jesus had been arrested. He'd been taken to the high priest's house for questioning. Here he is. And Peter couldn't believe it. How could Jesus have let this happen? Why hadn't God stopped the soldiers? Where were all the others? Why was he the only one of Jesus' special followers there? Mind you, Peter thought he couldn't really blame the others for running away. It had taken all the courage he had just to follow at a distance. He didn't want to get arrested as well. He knew what the palace guards were like and what might happen to him. So he stood there and wondered what to do. He knew that Jesus was being questioned by the high priest and his council in the big hall upstairs and there was nothing he could do. Just then, one of the servant girls came up to where Peter was standing to warm herself by the fire. She looked at him and asked, Weren't you one of the people with that man from Nazareth? Peter panicked. He didn't want to be caught, and so he blurted out, I don't know what you mean. I've got nothing to do with him. And he walked away from the servant girl, away from the fire, and out into the porch. He'd been standing there a little while, when she passed by again. He heard her say to the other servants, He is one of them. By now, Peter was beginning to get really frightened and without stopping to think, he said it again, only a bit louder this time. I don't know what you mean. I've got nothing to do with him. After she'd gone, Peter stood there unable to move, thinking hard, trying to make up his mind. What was he going to do? Should he creep quietly away and leave Jesus to his fate? 
that might be the safest thing to do. But how could he leave Jesus there on his own? He was one of his closest friends. True, he hadn't been much use to him so far. He hadn't done anything to stop him being arrested. In fact, he'd been a real coward back there in the Garden of Gethsemane. But even so, he couldn't just abandon him now, could he? While he was still deep in thought, one of the other people waiting in the courtyard turned to him and said, You're one of them, aren't you? You must be. I can tell you've come from Galilee by the way you talk. That was too much for Peter. He shouted, I've told you all. I don't know the man. And he rushed out of the courtyard. As he went, he heard a cock crowing. He remembered that day when he had said that Jesus was God's special one and Jesus had told him that he didn't understand. He remembered too the time he told Jesus that he'd never leave him and Jesus had said, You will. There will come a day when you will deny that you know me before the cock crows on that day, you will have denied me three times. And Peter broke down and cried. I wonder why Peter behaved the way he did. He'd been a loyal friend to Jesus up until this point and shown courage in following Jesus as far as he had. What had changed? Perhaps he was confused that something so awful could happen to God's special one. Perhaps Peter was afraid of being arrested himself if he admitted who he was. I wonder how Peter felt when he heard the cock crow. Do you think that after this, that Peter could ever be friends with Jesus again? Well, sometime later, when Jesus met Peter again for the first time after he'd risen from the dead, he asked Peter three times if he loved him once for each time he had denied him. Then Jesus told Peter that he would have an important part to play in telling the world about him. And he did. But that's another story. I'm going to finish by praying now. And if you want to make it your prayer too, then you can say Amen at the end. Dear God, when we are frightened, please help us. When we don't know what to do, please help us. When we're tempted to lie, please help us. When we let our friends down, please help us. When we're sorry and want to make amends, please help us. Amen.